What's going on, my friends? Welcome on out to Behind the Energy Podcast, where we dive into behind the scenes of DJing, entrepreneurship, and all the excitement in between. We got some friends, some cool people joining us, and a lot of fun stories. So without further ado, let's jump into Behind the Energy Podcast. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Behind the Energy Podcast for another killer episode with my man, Kevin Giles. What's what? up, Hey, how are you, Parker? Uh, I, uh, I almost wanted to say intern Kev for a <laughs> second, bro. <laughs> it's, it's still that way. Did, do you, wait, did you ever get a new name from intern Kev or is it just Kev? We went from like 2 a.m. Kev. What, I you covered a, all. a show that late? Yeah, for practice. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay. So DJ Handsome Hands came up with 2 a.m. Kev, BYU Kev. BYU. <laughs> Anything Kev kind of just went. That BYU video of you uh, yeah. imitating the basketball play? TJ Haas, shut the F up. <laughs> that was, that. did I'm did that go viral? Because <laughs> it should have. I, I should have tagged like BYU Barstool or, or someone like that. That, that. Kept it more low key, I guess. I literally watched it like four times. Like <laughs> I'm like, this is too accurate right now. The like, amount of times I watched it before I hit post, I was like, yep. This is gold. <laughs> I'm going to go with 2 a.m. Kev. Okay. Uh, not intern Kev. 2 a.m. Kev's in the house. Uh, just to pr- to provide a little bit of perspective here, uh, Kevin, Kevin's kevin been a homie for a number of years now. Yeah, um, it's been a while now. Uh, it was 2016, I believe, when I, when I started doing work with U92. And that's really where I think our friendship picked up. Yeah. Um, five years ago now, man. Yeah, 2016. Maybe was it 2015? End of that. It was around that time, but it's been a good five years. I think I, probably 2016. Actually, I think more summer. Yeah, because I I remember I I was in college. I started fall 16, um, going to that DJ competition. That's um, right. And uh, that, I think, was one of the big catalysts to uh, working with the station and, and really getting to know you. Um, before, before we go into too much detail there, um, Kev, uh, Kev is a husband, he's a father, he's a, he's a business owner, he's a DJ. <laughs> uh, he is working full-time as well, um, really in a number of roles. If, if that, exactly. if that's mm-hmm. that's appropriate, right? Um, Kev, I'm I'm I want to take it back to the early inspiration uh, and what it looked like when you first started entertaining the idea of DJing because you did DJ uh, like college prior to that, um, and then kind of gravitated more towards on air talent and like a on air talk show host. Correct? Yeah, it, I mean, if we want to go. All the way back, it really started probably when I was like four or five. Um, always, my mom tells me I was just drumming on the walls. I can remember just kind of just walking down the hallway and just kind of drum. And so it started there. Um, seventh grade is when I actually got more involved with percussion. So I did a percussion class. Teacher really thought I did well. So then she threw me in like jazz band, learned how to play drum set. Hmm. Um, that was ninth grade through high school, and then it was just jazz band, concert band, drum line, marching band. <laughs> what, did did you continue anything in in college with you? Uh, no, I th- I really wanted to go and do a scholarship, but kind of went on a mission, came home, and hmm. just didn't didn't have like the same passion. I didn't play as much prior, like in high school. Okay, so that's where it kind of transitioned into that DJing aspect. So I want to pause real quick. Mm-hmm. I DJ because I'm not musically talented. No, like I can't no. play instruments. You can play a number of instruments. No, you it sounds like Kev. You have to be <laughs> musically talented to DJ. Huh. That's a fact, right? There. I just wanted to highlight on that, bro. Like uh, I feel like that gives you a whole other perspective or an angle or leg up. I think that's yeah. Singer. What helped me kind of just get into it. Mm-hmm. Um, so after high school, go on a mission. Um, my last two areas, there was just, uh, what was he, less active member. 
-hmm. and he lived actually like below us. The radio station was the floor below us. So we would just hop down in the morning and just go kick it in the studio, you know? That's right. Uh, and that's where I kind of was just like, dude, this guy's just on social media. He's got music going. He's talking to people. That's when I knew, okay, I wanted to do something in radio. So come home, focus on going to school for radio, and come across just this other DJ company here in Utah that's hiring. And so yes. I, I figure... Oh, I Let's give it a shot, you know? Yeah, I, I forgot about uh, la Laughing, Laughing Gravy. Gravy. I forgot about that, yeah. yeah. So Laughing Gravy gave yeah. me my start, trained me, and it was kind of more just those, like, you know, I f don't want to be prideful or anything, but it's just like a natural thing that came to me. Pick, you picked it up. Yeah, yeah. just picked yeah. it up and uh, started just doing mostly weddings with that company throughout college. Mm -hmm. um, finally, from there, end of college got into radio and kind of did that so that's kind of the the whole story from start to finish just from a young age into drumming still have that passion mm. don't do it as much as I should I need me an electronic drum set mm. and then just kind of have evolved it into DJing and I think it's just understanding you know the beats that mm -hmm. has helped it seem more natural to me mm -hmm. the but the components or pieces of, of a song where the energy dies or the counts, you know, 32, 64, ins and outs, when, mm -hmm. to, when to mix in, when to uh, get on the mic and be that MC for however many seconds. Yep. Gotcha. Um, I, I feel like I remember you, you were doing work uh, in the University of Utah radio. Oh, yeah. I, uh, I skipped over that. Uh, the, the, the radio station at the U. KU Radio, yeah. K KU, K thank you, goodness. Um, <laughs> I had a I had a buddy uh, who who was like actually two friends who were really active uh, on KU Radio. Um, uh, I don't know really the status of it right now. Uh, it's been some time, but uh, uh, did you spend a lot of time there? Did you live in the studio, the same same one in the Union Building? Yep. Yeah, yeah. So went to Slick first, actually. So that was Radio SLCC. It's kind of where I okay. took that little nibble into radio. And then when I transferred up to the U, it's when I got involved with KU. And definitely spent a lot of time in there. Um, I mean, gosh, it's been six, seven years that I've been doing that or did that. But it was, it was a lot of fun. Had a show called KG's New Tunes at Noon. You heard yeah. the first baby <laughs> KG's new new tunes new and new tunes bro. And let's noon. go. Uh, uh, just try to break artists that I personally thought were like on the verge of becoming something, and mm -hmm. it was kind of cool when I like see an artist now that I played back then. I'm like, that you know, that's like, dope. That's really. Cool. I knew this guy would be big, or this artist would be huge, and mm -hmm. obviously, I'm sure I had a lot of flakes on that show that thought they'd be big and just one hit wonders or whatnot. Mm -hmm. But it was a lot of fun to be on air. I honestly do not know how many people <laughs> listened to it. Mm -hmm. It might have been my close friends and mom and dad, but really just good practice to be in a studio mm -hmm. by yourself, kind of know how that's going to work. And that's what got me onto U92. So I'm definitely grateful for my experience there with them. What was the conversation uh, or the the thing that that brought you 92 into your life to be an option or like that next step in your life it was a poster on our bulletin board so on campus mm -hmm. for right, real right in the studio a piece of paper poster <laughs> yeah like 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 in the union where there's so many yep. put on there you can barely read them and you you may not look at it at all because there's just so many pieces of paper and flyers on there. Yes, and exactly. you saw it. This one it was actually in our studio. Okay. So I didn't have to go through the whole call of mess and, and find out. You know what I'm talking about though? Mm -hmm. okay, okay. Yeah, just okay. the yeah. <laughs> hmm. So I I um reach out to it was Susie at that time. She was the promotions director. Get an, uh, get an email back immediately, just, hey, we're prepping for Summer Jam, letting me, know, like, hey, life is crazy, get back to me in, in two weeks. I'm like, cool, like, here's my shot, message back two weeks later, nothing. Hmm. I'm like, okay. Probably emailed again, maybe another three days later, 
nothing. So at that point, I'm just like, nope, like ghosted me, really wasn't interested in the first place or whatnot. So I just kind of was like, all right, wasn't meant to be. I kept doing it. And then I see another poster about a month later. And so I'm like, all right, well, they didn't get the person they wanted or whatnot. So I reach out again and sure enough, yeah, she set up an interview and the rest is kind of history from there. So just wasn't aligning at the time or whatever. I think probably just with Summer Jam, yeah. how, how things are and, and just mm-hmm. caught in, getting caught up in your day-to-day work. Probably was just something that was like, I'll get to it and never did. Mm-hmm. And I'm glad that that opportunity came up again because I kind of just gave up hope. Like, all right, maybe there's going to be another really? spot. Really? I mean, like, opportunities like that don't come around that often that are local. And so I kind of just thought maybe another station or we'll kind of see what happens once I graduate what's out there. Was U92... Was U92 the goal? Oh, yeah. Like, that was the station. Mm -hmm. That's dope. Yeah, that was the, the spot that I felt most comfortable with, like, who I was at the time and who I still am. And so, really, the stars aligned, and it it was a good run there for sure. That's awesome. Uh, so maybe just to show or connect some dots, how our paths overlap a little bit. Uh, I think it was, it was 2016 uh, where I was able to get brought on to U92 being a, a street team mixer, uh, doing these uh, remotes. Um, we talked about them in previous episode with E-Rock, but uh, really like a pop-up shop uh, where uh, U92 would go to different locations and would be broadcasting live and we'd have a live mixer. Um, and I remember the first pop-up shop uh, or remote was uh, Rocky Mountain Raceway that yes. we did together. Um, and uh, Poe was there. Mm-hmm. I was super nervous. Uh, and Kev was there. He was, he was helping me like, you know, stay stay chill and uh, just super supportive and um dude i swear it was only a matter of time where i was driving that big van i'm like oh my god y'all trust me <laughs> <laughs> i'm a side swipe here yeah that's a that's a crazy first remote though because it's not just you know playing in front of a few people that's you have an audience and you're entertaining on the drag strips strip does, does so rocky 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 Mountain Raceway. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, Raceway. No longer exists, yeah. too. Oh, that was the finale right. there. Was that really? Mm-hmm. Huh. So, Dang. I know, right? Hmm. Um, Kev, so I, I want to talk a little bit more about radio. I want to talk about um, your business, DJing, a little bit more okay. in detail. Um, and then I want to hear a tip uh, to someone who's beginning DJing, what you, what you would... Uh, uh, what would you suggest to them to help them further along the path or their learning curve? Uh, so as far as radio goes, from what I've collected from an outside perspective, not really nearly as involved as other team members who are working full time and who uh, have their very own show. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a very dynamic environment and always, always changing. Um, was it, was it what you expected and what was kind of like one of the bigger takeaways or like learning, uh, learning lessons in your time specifically with U92 and being on, being on air? Um, really <laughs> like one of the main learning lessons is operating the control the board. board. The mm-hmm. mixer, okay. Cause it's, I mean, you get into a studio and it, you just look at it kind of like how, when people come up at, at gigs and look at your DJ equipment and there's like, how, how do you like function all this? What does each button do? And yeah. half the buttons you rarely touch. Yeah. You know? you it's like to... you have your set ones and that's <laughs> kind of how it was there. Sorry, I was just going to make a joke. Never touch the sync button. Yeah. Don't, do, don't do that. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Kevin, please that's continue. The, that's the number one tip I, we will I, get to right there. I cut for... you off, bro. Oh, no, that's a great one. Yeah. <laughs> don't touch the sync button. Um, so... The kind of like the one of those first things. I'm the type of person that's like, when I mess up, because everyone does, like it like eats at me, and so I don't do it again. And I remember, um, as an intern, we would do these mixes during the hours, and mm-hmm. so the the board's just kind of running on a computer playlist, and we have to take it out of like an auto into just a manual override. So that gives the like authority over to the turntables so it's really just 
once I go into manual, we're counting down like when we're going live. Um, so it's a little nerve wracking because you want to make sure everything's right. This is live on air. There's no mm-hmm. like going back and, you know, thousands of people are listening. So going good and we're going into a commercial break ready to get back on the air and I forget <laughs> to put it back into auto. So we're just like chatting. I've I've turned it down because we're chatting and it's just dead space, dead air for probably two minutes. Oh, bro! Uh, until it's like notice that like oh nothing's playing, and it's like just that like guilt I had of that's on me. <laughs> you know, like drop like oh yeah, because yeah. it's like oh, here's man. my boss, uh-huh. prime time hours, uh-huh. and dead air. Like, that's the number one thing you can't have. And so, I mean, that's like a learning experience there. Hmm. Learning to just um, kind of get the energy from listeners. You When we're doing giveaways, you know, you can get a boring listener that's just like, hey, you won jazz tickets, or you won this. And it's like, uh, cool. On, on, on air, like when you're calling them and you're recording that or you're playing that. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, how how can you adapt to that or, or bring it up, maybe? Yeah, so that one, I mean, thankfully, the way we were doing it, most, I mean, tip for everyone listening, radio's pretty much not live anymore. A lot of it is yeah. pre-recorded. So when you're hearing, you know, the, these winter callbacks on air, yeah, they're, they're not live. Yeah. Um, so that was just the one tip I had to get good at. It's just like, one, I had to have the energy myself. Uh-huh. Two, if it wasn't good, it was just kind of like, let them know, like, hey, you just won jazz tickets. Like, can you give me a little bit more? And then they would do it. Oh, so you do it again. Yeah, I would just be like, kind of one of hey, those things you. where, it's, you know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. are y'all ready for this? And it's like, yeah, I can't hear you. You, gotta, you know, like, you got to be that louder. Dude, that just reminded me of Spongebob. I, I <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know that. You, the, 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 the intro to the Spongebob song. Oh, okay, the intro. Are you ready? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, bro. I, I, I literally, at high school dances, I played that as like a drop. Yeah. Like to hype them up. And then I loop Mr. Krab saying, oh, <laughs> And then I I I'd play uh, oh, it's uh, knife party internet friends. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> uh, I'll, how, have, to, I'll have to like record it or something. That. Um, okay, anyways, I, know, I know what you're talking that, about. Now. That's um, it. I I didn't. I, I've never done that myself. Uh, have been on air or you know facilitated a call like that. I wouldn't have thought of that um, had I probably ran into that. Uh, very interesting. Um, not only do you have to check your energy or be intentional with it, mm-hmm. but uh, you might need to say, "Yo, so and so, we recording this on air. Can you give me give me a little something else?" Yeah, interesting. And, and uh, I mean, you got to think of some people too. Like it's nerve wracking to call in, and yeah. I think some people won't do that, even if it's a cool prize. They're just so scared to talk to this radio host because. They think it's live, right? Yeah. A lot of people don't know, like, okay, if I mess up, they're going to edit it out and make it sound good. Mm-hmm. So they're on the phone like, yeah, thank you. And mm-hmm. like, you can hear the nervousness there. So it's like, hey, like, calm down, like, give me some energy and just mm-hmm. coaching them through. But the main thing I found out is if I'm answering the call and I'm boring, they're going to match my same energy. Yep. If I'm enthusiastic and they're not, then it's just like, hold on, let me coach you up. Like we we can do this, and then they like they listen to you. It's it's, it's crazy. Like I mean, you've been on the microphone and you've done things where kids will listen to you. Sometimes kids don't though. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> those are those are tough. Um, mm-hmm. But what you're describing here, like I I feel like that could be so applicable outside of radio in so many different settings. Uh, but I want to tie it into DJing because uh, that's that's where we're going next. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you as the DJ, you're you're setting the tone, you're creating that space, that energy, not only in the songs you pick, but the timing, the cho- the time you choose to interject, how you uh, how you deliver your emceeing, um, that's all playing into that energy. Um, and if they're down here, but you see potential of going up here, that's created by the DJ and these fine intricacies of. Uh, 
performing. Mm-hmm. Um, Kev, just in the interest of time, can we? I want to transition a little bit more to uh, your experience DJing and KG Entertainment. Um, can you give me a little rundown uh, of where that started and and uh, perhaps like where it's at right now? Maybe some goals. Yeah, um, that really started in 2019. Mm-hmm. Um, so I decided to leave U92. One of those things, loved radio, have so many good memories, mm-hmm. but you just kind of have that that calling or just like something kept pulling me towards, hey, you should start a bin- business. Um, but kind of radio was always like that crutch of like, no, I'm, I'm content. I'm good at where I'm at. Um, but finally, it was just one of those things that you just couldn't shake off anymore. And so... You know, things happen, and I decided to step away and start my own business. So hmm. May 2019 is when I founded KG Entertainment. Hmm. Um, good friends like you have helped that as well grow. Um, so, I mean, two years running, it was a hard time to start a business. The, the mm-hmm. middle of 2019, kind of starting it up, and then 2020, we have a pandemic. Mm-hmm. And then 2021, kind of things are back on the rise, so... I definitely have been grateful to have a business and kind of learn the the hustle that it takes, the effort required. Mm-hmm. Um, the goals kind of that I have, I'm kind of more set on more behavioral goals and not like let's, we need to have this many events and, mm-hmm. and you know, this dollar figure amount. All I know what I can control is if I have the correct behaviors as far as, you know, a work ethic and when I'm at my events being professional, kind of getting over and, and above what the client is expecting, I know that these results will, will happen. So kind of my main goal as a business owner, hmm. as a DJ as myself, is just to, you know, under promise and over deliver. Mm-hmm. Um, if I can have that person coming up to me at the end of the night and just thank you, thank you, or, or mm-hmm. students or whoever it might be. Mm-hmm. Um, that's where I kind of get that energy from and kind of just thrive off of to keep pushing forward and get the motivation to grow the business every mm-hmm. step of the way. Mm-hmm. My mind went to specific places. It's such a rad feeling uh, when you do have those killer nights and mm-hmm. and they're they're raving they like they're supposed to be going on their honeymoon or you know they have an after party or whatever and they're just sitting here telling you you know how awesome it was um but also uh, i like the i guess the path in which you're choosing to set those goals because i i feel like it should start that way because uh, by doing by going this route um and going above and beyond in communication delivering um, and wowing the customer, the clients, the crowd, the, you know, more, I guess, uh, quantitative goals, uh, will follow. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I think, I think what we're gonna have to do, cause it's December 6th, we're gonna have to do a little reassessment, uh, <laughs> come time for, uh, part two on, uh, we might. on how the year went. Um, Kev, my friend, dude, this went by too quick, bro. Um, <laughs> Can you uh can you take take 60 seconds and uh give uh give me give us give beginning DJs a tip to further accelerate their careers at DJing. I know you can go a lot of different paths DJing. Um there's many different directions you can take it, but from your experience um as a musician, as a DJ working in radio, what's one thing you would, you would give? Um, especially with DJ, like it's very creative. Um, I would just say to try practice, come up, you might have these weird songs you want to put together, practice, watch YouTube videos. Mm. Um, for those listening, I would say to DM Parker, a live entertainment, he will bring you under his wings. Uh, you may end up on his team. Okay. No, I'm, no, this is this isn't sugarcoating anything either. It's it's really like there's a cool DJ community here in, in Utah. Um, with you doing this podcast, like there could be 
a beginner DJ listening. Mm-hmm. Um, so I really would DM Parker, Alive Entertainment. Um, I'm sure he will give you his tips as well. Probably a mixing session. You might end up, you know, in a spot on Alive Entertainment. So mm-hmm. just bring the energy and you got it. Bring the energy, baby. There it is. Uh, I, I honestly, I really do love that. I know, I know you're being serious, Kev. Uh, and I was kind of joking, but I didn't, I didn't have like really formal training or like a mentor. And I feel like with a few little nuggets, things could have moved at a much more rapid pace. So, mm-hmm. um, I love it. Uh, and then be exploratory. Uh, don't be afraid to try things. Practice is, yeah, is have the fun first with point. it. There we go. Excellent. Um, Kev, my dude, we're about there on time. Is there anything you want to throw out there that we didn't talk about? Uh, or are, are we feeling good? We chilling? I, I feel good. Uh, I'm, I'm putting you on the spot right yeah, now. I know. I said throw a curveball. Um, but I, I really feel good. Like it's, it's cool to be on this podcast with you because we really do go way back mm-hmm. and to kind of see, you know, we, we have two different businesses and most places would be like, why would I interview my competitors or why would I do mm-hmm. this? But really like, mm-hmm. I think that's what pushes us to mm-hmm. is we want to strive for greatness and better each other. Because we know like what's out there for this community, especially here in Utah, where I think, I don't know, people have like this weird thing about Utah where it can't be big or it can't have a nightlife or things like that. But us as DJs, we can continue to push that and just further the truth that we know what it can be. Mm-hmm. I, I agree 110%. There's a lot more potential than what's mm-hmm. happening right now. Um, I don't see you as a competitor. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I get what you're saying. He but, sees me as um, an underdog. <laughs> that, that's, not, that's, that's not it either. Um, I just found that uh, <laughs> there's a lot of uh, a lot of great benefits from uh, being a part of an engaged, supportive community. For um, sure. A lot of doors have opened because of the DJs I've met here in Utah. So, um, And a lot of fun memories and a mm-hmm. lot of great friends. So... Ladies and gentlemen, uh, 2 a.m. Kev. <laughs> it's uh, It's been real. It's been short and sweet, uh, but we do got to wrap it up because uh, I got to do homework. I graduate on Wednesday and we got finals and Kevin's got a family. He's got to go yeah. teach Ollie how to Ollie. Yes. Uh, that's what's up. And get him on the drums too. Um, Kev, thank you, bro. Thanks I, for I having me, bro. It. I appreciate you. For um, reals. Uh, Behind the Energy Podcast. Tell your mom, tell your cousin, tell your 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 boss uh subscribe hit that like button you know all the all the all the great stuff um but for real thank you and uh, we'll catch you for our next episode next week